you really don't need most of those supplements that are shoved down your throat on social media. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about the ongoing problem we're having with social media, influencers, and the promotion of all of these different supplements that you feel pressured to buy in the name of good health. Whenever you scroll on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, I'm sure at least at some point you're going to see a supplement ad, whether that's from the company themselves or a sponsored influencer. And on top of that, you're probably inundated with other ads too, from different clothing brands, different skincare brands, fitness companies, you name it, social media, is basically one giant advertisement. And to be honest, social media has gone from once a really fun platform where you used to share your photos and videos and your thoughts to basically a full-blown ad campaign. When we constantly see people that we follow and look up to and they're promoting a different product, we can really fall into the must-buy vortex because it creates the illusion that if we buy that product, maybe we could be like them too. And here's where the problem gets even worse. We have become a society of over consumption. We buy things we don't need. We take in so much information, it overwhelms our minds. And we're really just over consuming on virtually every front. I would say though, when it comes to buying supplements, this is even worse than over buying something like clothes or skincare. Absolutely, you shouldn't overspend your money and you should watch your budget, but it's your prerogative in terms of what you want to buy. But supplements aren't something we should be messing with. We are consuming these. We are taking in whatever is in those products. And it's not natural for us to be shoving pills and powders down our throats with little thought as to what is in them. And so when it comes to social media, we have a real problem on our hands because every single week it feels like there is a new trending supplement. We see so many different influencers promoting them and often your credit card just bought into them. So in today's video, I wanna teach you how you can critically analyze different types of ads to understand how they're influencing you and also understand how you are being tricked into buying more supplements than you actually need. And finally, I will provide tips on how to be a more conscious consumer. But first, hi, my name is Katie. I'm a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer. My goal at this channel is to help you learn more about nutrition, fitness, and wellness so that you can be your best, whatever that looks like. I also love to do product reviews. So if you have any products or topics you want me to review, just let me know in the comments below. And with that, let's get started. According to a survey done by Porch Group Media, over two thirds of people have made purchases through social media. 29% of social media users, so almost one in three people, are more likely to buy a product the same day they saw it on social media. And 11% of social media users immediately buy the product. So little thought has gone into it. And ultimately they're making an impulse buy. And 44% of people still end up buying the product a little bit later. On top of that, Gen Z's report that TikTok is the most trusted social shopping platform. And both Gen Z's and millennials make at least one impulse buy every two to three weeks on social media. Now the cherry on top is how badly we are influenced by other people on social media when it comes to our shopping habits. 49% of consumers report that influencers recommendations influence what their buying decisions are going to be. And 80% of consumers have purchased a product because it was recommended by an influencer. So majority of people have and will continue to be influenced by people on social media in terms of their purchasing decisions. And of course this survey was done for purchases in general, but we can easily assume that this applies to supplements too. In fact, if you're remotely interested in nutrition, fitness, or wellness, then you're almost guaranteed at some point in your day to see some sort of promotion for a supplement or wellness product. And while some products are good and I've done reviews on really good products and ones that are not so good, that's not really the point. The point is, is that more and more people are being influenced by social media and are being influenced in ways that they don't even realize. And oftentimes they are buying supplements that are A, a waste of their money, B, might not work and may not be right for them, or even C, could potentially be harmful. I mean, do you realize that there are rarely ever any ads for eating more vegetables or going for a walk for free in the park because free lifestyle changes cannot be sold. And yet these are the things that are actually going to be good for you. So here's the thing. There are so many things that companies and social media influencers do to get you to buy the product. And not all of them are out there to get you, but they do use tactics in order to influence you and encourage you to buy the product. And here are some examples. First of all, they utilize their bodies to sell products. Now I wanna be clear. I think it's amazing when people are fit and healthy and promoting a healthy lifestyle 
lifestyle is a great thing. Where the issue comes in is when there is an influencer that already is physically in shape, yet they are promoting a product and making it out like the product was what got them those results. For example, a lot of people promote weight loss products or weight loss programs, or maybe they're promoting a digestive product or a greens powder, and they make it out like that was what caused them to get these results. That digestive enzyme blend or that greens powder is what gave them that flat stomach. But here's the reality. Most of the time when a company wants somebody to promote a product, there's actually very little turnaround. I get sent to me so many email pitches for different companies and products, and almost always at some point in the email, usually at the bottom, it'll say, please let us know if you're interested by tomorrow or by the end of the week, and please plan to have your content posted by this or next week or something like that. Really quick turnarounds. So in most cases, there's no way that the influencer has even had enough time to try the product and ultimately get the results that the product is promising. And on top of that, most of these influencers have a fitness or a wellness page. So it is their job to already be in shape and have a certain aesthetic that they show on their social media page. And majority of the time, I would argue that the person was already in really good shape before they promoted the product. Number two is that they sell you a dream. Look, I am a sucker for a really aesthetic day in the life TikTok video from a person that lives what would most people call a dream life. You know the person, they have a really nice house, they drive a really nice car, they are super fit, they're always put together with that clean girl aesthetic, they always get in their 10,000 steps a day, and it's natural to look up to your dream lifestyle, but here's the key word, dream. Maybe someday you can live like that, maybe you can have a nice house, maybe you can have a nice car, maybe you are in the best shape of your life, but chances are if you are a normal person with a normal job and you're not an influencer, even if you have all of these nice things, it's unrealistic to expect yourself to live exactly like a person whose job it is to live like that. It's really just meant to be something that you look up to, that inspires you, that motivates you to do your best in your life. What you don't see in those videos is that the person spent two hours doing their hair and makeup to get ready for the video. You don't see that they put three ring lights around their kitchen island before starting the video. You don't realize that they either hired a maid or they just spent hours cleaning their house to make it look perfect before they turned the camera on. You didn't see them do multiple retakes because they messed up or they wanted to change what they said. And anytime in a video, even these YouTube videos, even mine, whenever you see slight edits, that's usually because either they're taking a deep breath, they messed up what they wanted to say, or they wanted to change what they said, so they had to edit it. This is their job and this is not real life. And they get paid to create content that gets views and no one wants to watch a video of a normal house that's messy and there's laundry piled up. No one wants to see that. So really a lot of these videos that are going to get the views are creating a dream lifestyle, something that we can aspire to have ourselves. And on top of that, we see so many really young creators seemingly have the most perfect life. They have these gorgeous houses, these really nice cars. And I'm sure you've thought to yourself, how is this 21 year old driving a Range Rover and living in a mansion? Well, first of all, this isn't normal. And yes, maybe a few of them were very successful young and were fortunate enough to have these things at an early age. But if you actually look into the background of a lot of influencers, a lot of them already came from wealth. Or sometimes, and this happens more than you realize, maybe an influencer rented out a house or rented out a space to film their content and to create the illusion that they live there. And yes, this happens more than you realize. I know influencers that have rented out kitchens or rented out spaces to film their videos. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just understand that that does happen. So now that you realize that the videos are made to sell you a dream, you can understand that by selling you that dream, they're able to sell you products that will make you think will help you get that dream. Buy this greens powder and de-bloat your body and have a flat stomach. Buy this workout set and accomplish all of your fitness goals. Buy my weekly meal plan that only uses expensive organic ingredients because that's what it takes to live this lifestyle. But the reality is that these products don't lead to these lifestyles. These products are not what got them that fit body. It was all the workouts they did, the large amount of time they have every single day to go for two hour walks. It was their genetics. They had money and so on. In fact, remember that a lot of lifestyle habits that will actually get you results are something that they can't sell to you. You getting up and going for a workout, they can't sell that in an ad, but they can sell you that really expensive workout top instead of the cheap one that you can buy at Walmart. You buying 
whole nutrient dense foods, they can't really do an ad on that because there's not a lot of profit for it. But they can sell you a greens powder. You establishing a really good sleep routine, they can't sell that. But what they can sell you is a really expensive mattress topper. I'm sure you've seen a lot of those ads or maybe a sleep supplement. The reality is they have to create content that's going to give you the illusion that buying these products and supplements are going to get you that dream lifestyle because they have to make money at the end of the day. I'm not telling you not to dream big and not to do things that will improve your life. I'm actually encouraging you to do that simply by not buying into the guise that this is how you get your dream life. Okay, so number three is that they get a lot of products for free. Have you ever wondered how all of these social media influencers seemingly take hundreds of dollars worth of supplements every single month? And if you've gone on social media and seen somebody post all of the supplements they take in the day, it adds up. So let's say that somebody buys Athletic Greens AG1 Greens Powder. Let's say that they take Seed Symbiotic. Let's say they take Symbiotica's liposomal vitamin C. Let's say they take any type of protein powder. And let's say that they take Armour Colostrum because that's really popular right now. So here's the total per month in US dollars that you would spend to get all of these supplements. It's $79 a month US for Athletic Greens every single month. It's $49.99 per month for Seed Symbiotic. And I actually like Seed, but it's still expensive. It's $62 US per month for Symbiotica's vitamin C. The average protein powder is about $50 US a month. And it's $50 a month for Armour's Colostrum. And actually it's more if you use the increased dosage that they recommend, but we'll just go with $50. So if we add all of these totals up, and of course over time, they probably will increase in price. But if you add all of these totals up as of today, that's $290.99 US. And if you're Canadian, that's $392 Canadian a month. And that's not including things like taxes, shipping, and so on. And of course, sometimes you can get sales, but just to keep the example simple, we'll just assume that you're paying full pop for them. If we total all the months up to equal one year's worth of purchases, that is $3,491.99 US or $4,704 Canadian per year. So almost four grand, give or take US or Canadian dollars per year just on supplements. Now I'm not saying these products are bad. I've done reviews on a lot of them, so feel free to check them out, but that is still a ton of money for the average person to spend on supplements. I don't know about you, but spending upwards of $4,000 a year for supplements, at least for a normal person like me, that's outrageous. So how do influencers even afford this? Well, it's usually one of two ways. The first one is that they're already wealthy, so this isn't a big expense for them. Or two, the companies send them the products for free. When I tell you that companies love to send free products, they love it. I get dozens of emails every month from companies asking me if I want them to send me free products. And for any future influencer out there, please do not accept any deal where you promote their product for free in exchange for the product. They can afford to pay you. But sometimes if an influencer has an agreement with them, let's say that they have a shareable coupon code and they make a commission off the sales, then sometimes the company will just continue to send them the product for free and they promote it that way. So when you go on social media and you see an influencer pulling out that big supplement drawer full of dozens of different supplements, you can probably now assume that a lot of them were sent to them for free or they're already wealthy. Unlike you, the normal average consumer, you have to pay for it. And when you look up to certain people and they live your dream lifestyle, sometimes we can convince ourselves that it is worth the investment to buy these products and supplements in the name of good health. And yes, some supplements are expensive and they are good ones. I'm not saying that the two can't be true, but being able to decide for yourself is what is really important. The fourth thing a lot of the times they do is that they're an authority figure and they use numbers as credentials. When you look at someone's social media and they have a million followers, it is really impressive. And I think that's a great accomplishment for that person. But just because someone has a huge following, that doesn't mean they're an expert in the thing that they're promoting. Sure, they may know how to make amazing content. Sure, they may have personal experience getting into shape but do they actually have the knowledge and credentials to actually promote it? That's really the question you need to ask. And in a lot of cases, we see somebody with a massive following and they're promoting a product and we think to ourselves, well, they wouldn't risk their reputation by promoting a product that they don't believe in and think works. And therefore it probably is a good product. But here's the reality. When someone is getting paid thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars to do a 30 second TikTok video, values and morals get a little blurry. And yes, I said thousands of dollars for a 30 second 
second video. Not 50 bucks, not 500 bucks, thousands. And the more followers you have, the more you can charge. So let's say somebody can get paid $15,000 to do one or two videos across their TikTok, their Instagram, or maybe their YouTube. They might actually do it, especially if they don't have enough experience or knowledge about products and they don't necessarily know the benefits and risks of taking it. Now, sometimes influencers do have credentials. Maybe they're medical doctors, maybe they're dermatologists, maybe they're nurses, maybe they're dietitians. Here's the thing about regulated health professionals. They are supposed to not have bias when they are talking about products and they are not supposed to promote any products that are not evidence-based and they do not genuinely believe in. So for example, they can't say that this vitamin C supplement is the best supplement ever and this is the only one you should buy. They can say it's a good product and they can list the benefits of it, but they still have to maintain somewhat of an unbiased perspective. So when a health professional is promoting a product, they usually are doing it because they have a genuine interest in the product and usually believe in it. And usually this collaboration is mutually beneficial for the health professional as well as the company that wants them to promote the product. So for example, let's say a dermatologist is promoting a vitamin C serum because based on the research, it does seem to support skin health. Or for example, maybe a dietitian is promoting a protein powder that has the right amount of amino acids and a really good protein content and it is a quality product that may support muscle building. I don't have an issue with anyone doing sponsored content. I think it's actually something that can be a good thing when it is done correctly. But the key is that the video is done with professionalism, it is evidence-based, and it is a product that they genuinely believe in and support. But just like anybody, there are influencers and there are health professionals that may do collaborations and promotions that maybe they shouldn't have. I have seen dietitians promoting sugar companies or products from what I would call junk food companies. I've seen dermatologists and PhDs recommending greens powders. I've seen it all. So even when you're looking at different types of promotions by health professionals, it's still important to use your critical judgment. Don't buy a product because anyone has influence. Buy a product because you genuinely believe it's right for you, your budget, and your health. And let's be real for a second. Content creators and influencers' job is to create content, and they spend hours, if not days, creating content. And they spend a lot of money on equipment, on editing tools, or whatever they need to make their content. And they can't work for free. So how else are they gonna get paid? The first thing is that social media companies need to do a much better job at compensating their creators. The reality is, is that if the content creators didn't make content, their companies would not exist. Instagram is solely reliant on people posting photos, stories, and reels. TikTok is solely reliant on people doing lives and posting videos. YouTube is also reliant on people posting videos. Now, some companies are better than others in terms of compensating their creators. One company that definitely needs to do a better job is TikTok, and they are notoriously bad for not paying their content creators. And just so you know, only a few countries actually qualify to be part of the TikTok creator fund, meaning that they get paid for the videos they post. And as a Canadian, we don't get paid at all. And even though I have over 150,000 followers on my TikTok channel, for every single video I post, I get a whopping zero dollars. And yes, you can do their subscriptions and their live videos, but that doesn't pay very much. And even if you are part of the TikTok creator fund, you don't really get paid that much per video, unless your video gets millions of views. I would say that YouTube is much better at compensating their creators, and they do have milestones that you can reach in order to get paid. And I would say overall that they are a little bit easier to achieve, but you still have to have so many views in order to get paid really well. And on Instagram, they're starting to pay people, but not really great either. So in order for a full-time content creator to make money, they either have to promote products from other companies, or they have to sell products themselves. And then if they can make some money by their viewership, then that's great too. And I totally understand the predicament that they're in. The big problem is that because they're not making that much money off of their viewership, again, unless they have a massive following, they do become reliant on promoting products to make a decent income. And it's really complicated because I totally understand I'm a content creator myself, like they need to make money. But sometimes these promotions aren't helping people. And it's even more complicated because a lot of influencers and content creators are just doing their best and they are working with companies that they believe are good 
products and good companies to be working with. Yet when you watch some of my review videos, you'll learn that some of the products that they're promoting, even though they may genuinely believe that it is a good product, they aren't actually that good of products at the end of the day based on research and when you actually look at the ingredients. So what can you do if you want to support influencers and content creators that you really like and you want them to do well? Well, there are a couple things you can do. For example, if they have any online courses or they have any products that you really like, then sure, buy them. You could support them by clicking that thanks button and making a donation. One thing that is totally free for you is to not skip the ads on YouTube. So watching the ad in full that actually supports the creator more than you realize. Maybe you prioritize apps and companies that pay their creators well or at least better than the other ones. Maybe you just like and share their videos. Maybe leave a really positive comment. These things help to promote their channel or their page even more and it's totally free. And maybe if there is a product that you do like and you plan on buying, maybe you do use their coupon code. But only do that if you've decided for yourself that you're gonna buy the product and this is a way that you can buy the product, get a little discount yourself and support the creator that you like. But ultimately at the end of the day, we need to be better conscious consumers of social media. We need to be conscious consumers where we actually stop and think about the things that are being influenced and promoted to us. And we need to stop and think before we go and just buy random supplements and random products. And really what we need to do is stop and think to ourselves, am I being influenced right now? Because nine times out of 10, you are. So now here are some tips on how to make better purchasing decisions when it comes to supplements promoted online. If you are frustrated with all of the supplements that are being promoted on social media and online, and you really don't know if the product is good or bad, here are some things that you can do to help you make the best decision for yourself. First of all, take a look at the theme of the ad and ask yourself a couple questions. Do I wanna try this product because I like the aesthetic of the video? Is it because I look up to the person or I aspire to have their life? Do I feel like I could look like them if I take their supplement? If you are inspired from a video that is totally normal, but don't let that inspiration get you to purchase products that are probably not going to get you to that lifestyle. Number two is to look at the product with a critical lens. Does the product make really big promises? Chances are it's not a miracle pill, especially for supplements is can I get these nutrients from my diet? Because the best thing you can do is to get your nutrients through food first. You ask yourself, is this the latest trendy supplement? Because usually at one point, a supplement or a product was popular at one point, it may not be now. And it could be the same thing for this. Just because it's trendy doesn't mean it's actually a good product. Also ask yourself, is there research to back up the product? And is that research and those claims coming from an impartial party? So not just from the company promoting it. Another thing you can do is look at your budget. Are you about to blow $100 a month on a supplement that you don't need? Because that $100 a month could go towards buying food, buying a gym membership, paying your rent, saving money, investing it, and other things that are so much more important and will actually benefit you compared to this supplement that probably won't do very much. The fourth thing you can do is look at impartial reviews. I personally try to make unsponsored videos so I can educate the public and people like you to understand if products are research back and if they're actually going to work and help you. And the reason I make these videos is because I want you to understand the products without any bias. And of course, health professionals aren't supposed to have any bias, but at the end of the day, if they're still promoting a product, they're going to speak positively on it. And it's important to understand, yes, the benefits of the product, but what are the downsides? So whether it's my videos or someone else's videos you trust, it's important that you're watching reviews that are as unbiased as possible and they don't have any specific angle. If someone is only speaking really, really positive about something or they're speaking really, really negative about something, chances are there is a bias. And yes, someone speaking really, really negative about a product or a company or a supplement or whatever, even though they're speaking negatively about them, there also could be a bias there. Maybe they want you to buy a different product or maybe they want you to follow them because they are really negative and they don't like promoting products. A good review is going to involve someone reviewing the pros, the cons, and other considerations that you need to make when deciding if that supplement is right for you or not right for you. And they are not pressuring you to buy it or not buy it. Unless it's unsafe, then definitely they probably will tell you not to buy it. And the final thing is to simply wait. Don't buy anything right away. This is a good practice, not just for supplements, but for pretty much anything else too. Let yourself think about it for a couple days or even weeks and do your research. There will always be sales and there will always be coupons that you can use. You don't need to feel pressured into buying it just because it's on sale, just because there's a coupon available, there will be more in the future. And don't let anyone pressure you into buying a product immediately without any thought behind it. At the end of the day, you are in charge of your purchasing and health 
health decisions. No one should or can influence you to do or not do something. Your ability to make decisions yourself is your power. You are in the driver's seat, so it's time that you make sound decisions in the name of your health and your budget. And if you are unsure about a product or a supplement, then hopefully you can come back to this video and it can help you make better decisions. Of course, I do make product reviews, so feel free to check those out if you are curious if a product is evidence-based, research-backed, and will work, or if you should save your money. And if you have a product that you want me to review and I haven't yet, just let me know in the comments below or on any of my videos. I try to check my comments as much as possible. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video and you want to support my channel, the best way you can do that is by liking, subscribing, and maybe even leaving a positive comment and even sharing it if you want to get adventurous, because all of that will help support my channel and help me reach more people like you. And I'll see you in the next video.